Well, today I did a stone carving letters. I carved some letters out on a piece of limestone that I actually, this is a piece of a step. When I put my steps on, it's just a limestone step, and I put the letters in it. Then after I was done, I thought, you know, maybe I'll make a, a little cornerstone out of it and put it in one of my jobs. I went up to Wayne Faree, and I looked at the way that he carved stone. Now, he was a carver at the National Washington Cathedral, so he's going to kind of critique the way I did it, and he's going to show us the way he did it. Interesting video. So here we go. I'm at a cemetery, and I'm going to take this letter right here because it has the zero, the two, and the one. And let me see if I can't do this. And that's going to show where those letters are at. You see that? And then I'm going to go back and trace that. See, there's the two. that see those letters coming out of there Let's see what else we got here don't need the nine what we need the one it's a pretty basic one there we go so now we know we do the carving how that's all going to work out so the first thing I'm going to do is get a razor blade and cut these letters out. Very simple. Make sure I'm going straight. So that's my first letter. I'm going to pop that out. There. That's the one that I need. So okay, I cut my one, my zero, my two. And then what I did is I just put the two down and I traced it to put the two down. Now the one here seems just a little close. I don't know. So all I do is get the sandpaper and erase it. And I'm going to put that one in again. So I don't know. I think it just should be right there. That looks a little farther away, but... That's okay. And then I square it on top and I trace it in. So that just looks a little bit better. Seem to be spacing with the eye pretty good. This goes like this. So what tools am I going to use to carve this out? Well, I don't really have that much. I got this one screwdriver, this is a wood chisel, the hammer, the point, it don't matter much. But I told you before, if you get a butter knife and carve that, see the hole in there? So it's not a big deal. What we want to do, or is what I want to do, is make sure I'm kind of straight here. Do that over here. I'm gonna make sure I'm straight here. Now I got something to go by, and it's kind of fluted. I know it's supposed to be up in here with that. Maybe not. Maybe I gotta go down a little bit. Right up in there. So we're just going to start right here. We're just going to tap it a little at a time. We don't want to get crazy. We're going to get it. See? Like Wayne would always say, you have to have somewhere where to uh, stone will go. So we know that's fluted. I'm going to stay away from the end there. Get a little closer to the line. All right, we're getting there. Get on this side a little bit. I 
he said that's a little fluted so that's it so far see it's coming out around this end here start from there and go in this is sharper it's working better I like it look at that working better we got time we're not gonna f we're not gonna hurry up with this we got time. Now, when I was in Egypt, I went to a place where they were carving out bowls and everything. <laughs> Let me show you that. So we got our we got our one done pretty good. And as you know, you could just take the screwdriver, I got a little bigger one this time, and scrape it. And you'll get what you want out of it. So it's no big deal. So that's good. Now we're gonna go to the two. I think we'll start right there. Matter of fact, we use the what I do with it. The bigger screwdriver now. I sharpen it up like a chisel. And it's cutting a lot, lot better. See that? Don't need no fancy tools. We're just gonna take our time and get this done. Not gonna win no trophies here. I've been getting it a little at a time. I've been using different tools, trying different techniques. See what works, what doesn't work. As long as they don't go past the line, I should be good. So I'm just moving on. Like I said, you could cut this stuff with a butter knife. So it's hard. Some of it's hard. See, there's like little crustaceans in there. But for the most part, I could just scrape it all out of there, just like that guy from Egypt. Now, as you can see, we're continuing on. And I'm getting a little faster and a little better. But if you watched, uh, you were watching my videos and I still have three more to put out about Egypt. I was in Egypt uh, three times in my life. And you know how they say, here's a piece of copper. See that? Put it in your thing. They only had copper tools. I don't know how they did it with just copper tools. That's how they did it. The guys that are saying that were never a stonemason. And when I was a kid, I used to help this guy, Ned Darmute. He was, uh, he moved houses. And we'd lift the house up, and we moved the house. And all he did it was with jacks and rails. No big deal. So you get the point about the copper. It's all a big lie. Steel's better, of course, but that's all nonsense. So we're continuing on here get a little faster and a little better so 
So I changed the angle of the of the camera a little bit so you could see the shadows. Because the shadows seem to show what's going on and what doesn't go on. You gotta step away from it every once in a while. But we're continuing on. So that's about it. It's not perfect. I do have those videos out on rock facing and shaping stones. Uh, gets into other stuff. Now watch as I turn the lights out. What I'm doing is taking this butter knife and just kind of smoothing those edges out the best I can. I turn out the light and you get a you get the shadows a little bit more. It's about the best I can do. So that's it, but now we're gonna go up to see my buddy Wayne, who is a professional stone carver, and asked him how I did and what I would do in wrong. So I brought my project up to Wayne Faree, who was a carver at the National Washington Cathedral, and he's gonna give me some tips on what I did and didn't do and how I should look at it. Well, I watched Mike's video when he was doing this and uh, he had a pretty good idea. I went to the cemetery and traced out some lettering that was already existing. Uh, and it's, it's kind of blocky. The lettering's kind of blocky. That's kind of an old-fashioned old style. See, the, the monument guys, they have uh, specific letters that are in plastic. And they line them up just the way the printer would in a, in a printing press job. And so they're very standard. A lot of them are pretty blocky. These are old style lettering. Uh, there's no differentiation in the width of the letter, which makes it a little boring. Uh, but uh, you can see that you, you don't need a lot of fancy tools to, to start scratching on a piece of limestone, especially, which is fairly soft. Now, what Mike did, he, uh, he etched the lines with a ruler. I don't usually do that because it kind of leaves a raggedy edge. I just go straight off the lines. And if you use a good, dark, hard pencil, uh, the lines will stay there until you get your carving done. But what I'm gonna do here is I've just got a simple tool. Now, this is actually made for a pneumatic hammer. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna use a, a little stone carving mallet. It's, it's made out of soft metal so that you don't damage uh, the end of your tool which needs to be cleaned to go in and out of your pneumatic hammer. But just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm gonna use this. Now what I usually do is I'll start at a corner. And the idea is to make a V, and so this line is right in the center of the letter. So I don't want to get my, my chisel up in here making making a gouge. It's got to be right in the center. But this is like uh, chopping a piece of wood. Have you ever seen a lumberjack or somebody chopping a tree with an ax? You don't, you don't get wide all at first. You start narrow and then you keep going out until you get what you want. So now we're going to go the opposite way. You can see how the corner of my tool is, is right in the center there, like where that V is supposed to be. And then the next pass, you go over the first cut that you made and come a little bit closer to your line. Keep blowing the, the stone off so that you can see where your line is. Now, you can see that the corner of my tool is right in that V. And that's where I, that's where I want to be. I'm always thinking about getting that V in the letter.
Now when it comes to the ends, you're basically doing the same thing. You want that V shape. And the depth of the V should probably be about two-thirds the width of the letter. In other words, I'm going to go about from the corner of my chisel to the corner of my chisel. It's going to be about the depth of that cut. This is about three-eighths of an inch, and the depth of the cut is going to be a quarter inch. Now, the good thing about this tool is it is a quarter inch wide. So if this corner of the tool is touching the, the center there in the V, and this corner is touching the, the line, then I know that I'm exactly a quarter of an inch down. Well, not quite, because the tool is not vertical. It's got a 45 pitch on it, so we're not quite there, but that's sort of a rule of thumb. But basically, there really are no rules. You can do all sorts of different things. It all, it's all depends on, on you and your imagination. And of course, if you're doing a project, you might have some specific things, specific design that you have to follow. So then the final part is to sort of, it gets this film on it, and if you come in by hand and just sort of scrape that film off, it darkens the letters. You need a really sharp tool for that. See how much darker that's getting? And what I usually do is I'll come back and erase the line with some relation pencil lines with a piece of sandpaper. That's a big difference. Then you can see more what you've really got without the, uh, the pencil lines. So that's all done with one tool. Well, this is pretty good what Mike's got here. Uh, it's 
it's basically the same thing that I did. And uh, it just needs to be scraped out a little more and make it darker. But that's, that's how it's done. And I think Mike just used a screwdriver that was sharpened and then he, he uh, mentioned something about copper tools. I mean, you could use a copper tool, you just have to sharpen it quite a bit. But you know, the stone carvers and stone cutters, uh, when they were doing production work, they had, they had a designated blacksmith and all he did was, was make tools and sharpen tools all day for the guys that were using the tools because when they get dull, then the stone carver would have to stop what he was doing to sharpen the tools or make the tools. So that was really kind of a drag on production. So there was always a designated person who sharpened the tools and made the tools. So that's how they used copper tools. They just kept sharpening them and making new ones all the time because the metal was just not the same kind of metal technology that we have today. So that's it. You probably can't see it because it's so far away, but there is a big difference on what he did and what I did. So I gave it a shot. I thought I'd use it for a cornerstone and something like that to go into a, a brick wall. But I want to thank Wayne for giving me a lesson on it. And uh, on his video, he does. Uh, he's going to be putting out some lettering carvings. So check out his channel, Wayne Faree. And uh, I'll leave you with some of the carvings that he's going to be putting out on his channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video.